Welcome to A Fraser Christmas. I'm Pastor Chris Montgomery, and I'm so glad you joined us for this celebration of the season of Advent and the coming of Jesus Christ. You're going to hear from choirs and singers, traditional and modern, young and old, across the spectrum of ministries here at Fraser. More importantly, you're going to hear anew the old, old story of how God has come to dwell among us. I invite you to lean in, participate with us, and expect to hear from God as we walk through the hope the peace, the joy, and the love of Christmas.
over 400 years before the birth of Jesus, the prophet Isaiah wrote these words. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This was the longing of the people of Israel. This is the longing of every human heart. In the midst of darkness, despair and death, we hope. We hope for comfort to come at last. We hope to finally be done with the demons we battle with. We hope for the coming of God in every real and possible way in our lives. And that is the hope that began to be answered the first Christmas morning, when the angels sang from on high, Gloria, the glory of the Lord is revealed in the tender tiny face of a newborn child.
Elsewhere in Isaiah we read, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the adder's den, and they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. You know, so often in this world, what we look for is peace, but what we see is violence and injustice and oppression. The strong take advantage of the weak and all of our human efforts at peace seem to backfire. And yet there's something about Christmas that causes us to know deep down that peace is possible, that the day is coming when justice will come and it all hinges on this branch from the stump of Jesse, the newborn king laid in a manger. He's born to a poor family in a poor village without pomp or appearance of power, and yet his way leads us to the paths of peace. This is Jesus, the Prince of Peace, our Lord.
In Isaiah 35, we find these words. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with recompense of God. He will come and save you. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals, where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes, and a highway shall be there and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall become to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on them. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Christmas is often presented as a happy time, but for some it can be a time of loneliness, or sadness, or even grief. But there's something more than happiness in Christmas. There is joy. Joy comes where we least expect it, like streams in the middle of a desert. Joy is found not by avoiding our pain or ignoring our brokenness, but by facing it head on and discovering that Jesus is the one who heals the blind, the deaf, the lame, and he mends our broken hearts. If we follow it, Christmas opens up before us a highway of holiness that leads to everlasting joy. And it begins on the highway to Bethlehem as we come to bow down and worship before Christ our Savior. Let us pray. 
And scripture says, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Hope, peace, joy, these are parts of the message of Christmas. But the greatest message of the story is love. When you love someone, you want to be close to them. And in Jesus, we discover a God who is not far away. He's not separated from us in a distant heaven. He is not keeping us at arm's length because of our sins and failures. Instead, He comes near. He is Emmanuel, God with us, dwelling among us. He is as close to us as a baby in the arms of its mother. This Jesus who was born in fulfillment of the prophetic scriptures would go on to die for us on a cross and be resurrected back to life on the third day. This is how we know God's love is for us. While we were yet sinners, He came to us. He gave Himself for us. He saved us. What remains is for us to allow His love to fill us, to fill us with love for God, with love for our neighbor, with love for ourselves. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. May this love, the love of God, fill you to overflow in this Christmas season and throughout the year. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shine. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth.
Hey, thanks for joining us in worship today. We are so glad you were with us, and we want you to know that you can always watch the entirety of all of our worship services on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash Church and check it out there. And also, we would love to connect with you, pray with you, walk with you as you take your next steps in following Jesus Christ. So please feel free to reach out to us through our website, Frasier.church, or through the numbers that you see on the screen. We'd love to follow up with you. So God bless you. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.